Hi, this is Tim Warner from CBT Nuggets. Welcome to this CBT Nuggets micro nugget entitled, What is RSS? What is, in fact, really simple syndication, or RSS? Specifically, friends, RSS is an extensible markup language, or XML-based file format, that enables us to subscribe to content on frequently updated websites, such as news sites. Most blogs and or content management systems nowadays have a provision for RSS feed creation. That is, if you plan on putting up a WordPress blog or using another blogging platform, there really isn't anything you need to do out of the box to create your RSS feed. It's going to be generated for you. But like I said, the neat thing about RSS is that folks can use RSS RSS feed readers, either web-based RSS readers like Google Reader that we'll take a look at in just a moment, computer-based feed readers, I'm partial to Feed Demon for Windows and Net Newswire for Mac OS X, and then of course nowadays with mobile technology taking center stage, there are plenty of RSS feed readers for Android, for iOS, for Windows Phone, and so forth. Now what is the benefit of RSS? Why would we want to subscribe to a site? Why instead wouldn't we just go to CNN.com or the CBT Nuggets blog every morning to see if a new article has been posted? Well, the answer to that, of course, is convenience. Would you rather pop open 10 browser pages every day to look at your major news sites that you tend to go to, or would you instead aggregate that content into a single interface? Actually, RSS feed readers are also called content aggregators because we're able to, for instance, aggregate the RSS feeds that give you the most recent an X number of posts that's configurable by the person who runs the website. And you can scan all of those headlines and even in many cases read the full articles all from within a single centralized interface. Enough theory, let's go out onto the web and let me show you how this stuff works practically. This is the CBT Nuggets blog at blog.cbtnuggets.com and what you'll find on news-oriented websites is a feed link. It used to be that folks were variable in how they display their feed link. It could just be text that says subscribe. It could be a button that says XML. But what you see here at CBT Nuggets is the industry standard symbol for an RSS feed. And what we can do is right click and copy that feed URL to our clipboard and then paste it into a feed reader. Now if you click the feed link directly, it shows you the underlying XML, which unless you're an application or web developer, probably isn't going to make a heck of a lot of sense to you. Now you remember that I just showed you how to copy a feed URL to the clipboard and you can paste it into your RSS reader application. What's cool now in 2012 is that the vast majority of feed reader applications, whether they're a browser-based application like we're looking at here, this is Google Reader, a completely free online RSS aggregator, or if it's an iOS or desktop app, you can often subscribe to a site simply by typing a keyword. For instance, in Google Reader we can click subscribe and we're asked not only for the feed URL, which we can paste in if we want to subscribe to that CBT Nuggets blog, but we can also put in a keyword. For instance, TechCrunch, if we're interested in the TechCrunch blog, we don't have to know the full feed URL. You'll see we get a return that enables us with one click to subscribe to that content. Most feed reader programs worth their salt, Google Reader is no exception, allow you to categorize your feeds in folders. As you see, I have several sites that I've categorized based on location, Nashville, Syracuse, etc. And the idea here is that you can click a link in your feed reader and get all of the recent headlines from that site. So at a glance, I can get up to date with my movie news, with my music news, with my tech and current events news just by clicking through. Matter of fact, most of these RSS software products have an all items view that aggregates everything, all of the most recent headlines from all of your feeds. When you click a feed link, like I said, the site administrator can choose to show you the entire article or just a preview. Now it's generally considered good netiquette to give subscribers the full content and not trick them into clicking the link that takes them out to the actual website. That's where I'm going to complete our demonstration here by taking you to my personal blog, Tim Warner's Tech Blog. It's timwarnertech.com and we're looking at the WordPress administration panel, specifically under settings reading. This is where we can customize how many items or how many articles we're going to publish on our RSS feed, and then for each article in a feed, do we want the full text or the summary? It's really as easy as that. And then in conclusion, a user who wants to subscribe to my blog can either copy and paste my RSS
RSS feed URL, which is on my home page, to their feed reader, or more commonly just look up the site using the site discovery feature of their RSS reader software. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.